Precision rifle load development is always an interesting topic, and there are lots of opinions on what way is best. I have previously done a video series using Eric Cortina's PRS load development method that he referenced in his Stop Chasing the Lands video. In that series, one of the most common concerns was, what if I am limited by magazine length? This is what we are going to address in the new series which we are starting today, and we're going to show all the data and steps to generate it. For those of you that might not be super familiar with this process, we're going to break it down into four steps. The first step is finding jam, and then we'll use that jam dimension, subtract 20 thousandths, and that is typically your starting cartridge overall length. More on this in a second. The second step is testing powder and primer. Finding a powder that others have had success with is one of his recommendations, and testing at least two primers, depending on what you can find, is suggested. In his example Patreon video, he uses both BR4s as well as 205Ms. Now today, I'm going to be using the 205 Match AR as well as the CCI 41. Again, more on that in a second. The third step is tuning cartridge overall length, typically using three shot groups and adjusting your seating depth in three thousandths increments. A lot of threes here, huh? This step is accomplished after finding your powder charge that this video will primarily focus on. If you want to make sure you catch the next steps, make sure you subscribe. Step four is after all that work is done, going back, verifying your load, and adjust your powder charge up and down slightly to make sure you're in the center of your node and have the most forgiving load for both cartridge overall length as well as the powder charge. Now this specific video, we're going to be covering these first two steps as it relates to magazine length limited applications. The components we'll be using for today is the 147 grain ELDM by Hornady, Winchester Stay Ball 6.5, slightly unusual for my bench because it's a ball powder, but it is temperature stabilized. The primers we'll be testing today is the CCI 41, as well as the Fed 205 Match AR. The brass we'll be using for today's video is from Lapua 6.5 Creedmoor Small Rifle Primer Brass. It's been fired four times previously, and it's been through my full precision case prep. Annealing, full length sizing with a 2000s bump, setting the inside case diameter with a mandrel 2000s below our projectile diameter, as well as trim the length. Every single reload. The cartridge overall length we'll be using for this test is 2.860 inches, and we're going to go over why we chose this in just a second. So step one is finding jam, right? But we have this pesky magazine feeding issue. I didn't bother to find the jam point for this particular projectile because I know where it touches the lands. The touch point for this when the barrel was brand new was 2.873 inches. So far, the limit of testing I've done for this jam measurement is going to increase that dimension somewhere around 50 thousandths or so, depending on your neck tension. And even though my AICS pattern magazine will accept a 2.88 inch zero cartridge overall length, I don't want to run it that close. So I'm going to start by backing this off all the way down to 2.860 inches, which is going to be starting at least 13 thousandths off the lands. Now when we do the cartridge overall length portion part of this testing, we'll only be decreasing that cartridge overall length, which will be increasing the distance that it jumps to the lands. When we did all this testing on the 140 grain ELDM, we found a pretty wide node, well off the lands. So at this point anyway, I'm really not concerned about jump whatsoever. So if you're limited by your magazine length, have no fear. We just need to know what the longest length that is going to reliably feed. It's not going to matter if it fits and it doesn't feed. It still has to function. And this is our limitation. So figure out what cartridge over length is going to be the max where it's going to reliably feed. And that's going to be your jam measurement or where we start. So now step one is complete. 2.860 inches is where we know we can feed, and that's what we're going to be using. Step two is testing powder and primer. Today's powder is Stayball 6.5. It is a ball powder, but again, temperature stabilized. The only one I'm aware of, at least at this point. If you're not familiar on the burn rate chart, it's stuck right between hybrid H100V and Vitivori N550. For 6.5 Creedmoor, one of the most favorite powders is H4350. But as the name suggests, with 6.5 in the title, this should still work really well for us. I've seen this on store shelves quite recently, as well as online, quite a few times in the last few months. So even this shortage, I've had reasonable ability to get this powder. I haven't been able to validate that everyone's had success with it, but I'm very optimistic. The low data for this powder, we're going to be looking at Hajian's website. And you're going to see that the max list for the 147 grain ELDM and this powder is 42.3 grains. So when we pick out our max for this load, we're going to go slightly above that because we want to see if we're going to hit pressure. We don't want to be loading right against maximum if that's where we find our node is and find out just a little bit hotter than that is going to give us pressure issues. So we're going to go to max at 42.5 grains today and we're going to load 10 different increments. For those that might be concerned about being slightly above max, 
we are well over the cartridge overall length that Hodgkin is listing, so I'm really not expecting to see any pressure issues. But when we test these, we are going to be starting at the lowest point and then increasing in those 0.2 grain increments. So if we find a pressure sign, we're going to find it along the way. Now if you're using a larger case, you might want to go up in slightly bigger increments, maybe 0.3 grains. But when in the cartridge case I have around 42, I'm going to be going in 0.2 grain steps. I don't want to get distracted here, but I'm sure that we're going to lose a few of you, so let's talk over some points of consideration. Number one, to do this method, your process really should be dialed in. If you're not 100% confident in your reloading process, you may want to load more than one at each charge weight. This is entirely up to you. More samples should give you more confidence in your data. It's just going to use more components. Number two, to do this, you should be using fire-formed brass that has been through your consistent reloading process. Like I said before, I anneal every firing. I full-length size, bump that shoulder back, two thousandths. I set my neck tension with the mandrel, it's two thousandths under the projectile diameter, and I trim every single time. Introducing a variation in your process will also introduce variation in your results. The third consideration we need to discuss is when we look at our expected velocity numbers, that the data we're seeing is based on a 24 inch barrel. My barrel is 26 inches, so we're going to see higher velocities, not necessarily higher pressures, but because our barrel length is longer, this will affect our data and give us slightly higher velocities. So for our load charges we've nailed down, if you did the math, we're going to be starting at 41.7 grains of Stayball 6.5. We're going to be going out to our max a day of 42.5 grains, going up in 0.2 grain increments. 10 rounds, if you choose to do more, that's up to you. So now, let's talk primers. Now if you're not familiar with 6.5 Creedmoor, there are actually two different primer style options when picking out brass. Not available from every manufacturer, but even Lapua now is offering both large and small rifle primer brass. In today's test, we're going to be using small. Because my factory firing pin is probably slightly more optimized for the larger primers, I like to use a slightly harder cut primer. This reduces my primer cratering when I get to higher velocity loads. This is the primary factor why I'm choosing these two primers to test today. For your application, you may not just need to choose what's in stock or what you have available to you. I've had lots of people tell me that primers don't matter, but I assure you they will affect the results and you'll even see that in today's data. Now ordinarily running this test, I would have reloaded 10 rounds of each primer for a total round count of 20 rounds. However, today we're going to be discussing 60 total rounds probably not split the way you're going to think. So, for our 205 Match AR, we loaded 5 at each of the 10 rounds, so a total of 50 rounds. For the CCI-41, we only did 10. The reason being is I used this data in my OCW versus 10 shot ladder video. I tried to highlight in that video the positives and negatives of having more and less data to work with, so I'll link that in the description box if you're interested in checking that out. It'll have a little bit more data than we're going to go over today for those specific primers but we're going to cover everything we need to know which one we're going to pick to move forward. So let's look at our curves, and we're going to show all five different curves. And how these were fired, we started and fired one string, all 10 rounds, did another string all 10 rounds, with a wait time of about two minutes in between each firing. So the first string, starting off with a warm barrel, at 41.7 grains, we started off at 2680 feet per second, and at 43.5 grains, we went all the way to 2757. Had this been the only string that we generated, looking at a fairly wide higher velocity node, it looks like 42.9 grains might have been a very interesting place to load. But if we wanted to load a little bit lower, maybe somewhere down around 41.9 grains would have been a good place to look. Now, our second string is going to show us one of the downfalls of this method. You'll see at 41.7 grains, we started off at 2665 feet per second, but at 42.5 grains, our chronograph missed that data point. Depending if that was somewhere we wanted to load, that could be a crucial piece of information that we missed. And again, certainly a downfall of this method. With the data that we generated from string 2, it looks like that 42.9 grain part might be a good place to load, and again, down at 41.9. Moving on to string 3, 41.7 generated 2659 feet per second, and at 43.5 we maxed out at 2778. Looking at only this string, the biggest velocity node that appears to me on here would have the middle somewhere centered around 42.5 grains. Again, a slightly smaller node might have appeared around 42.9, but depending on how wide your nodes are, you might just have to look at a few of these before you really understand what your results are going to be. Our fourth string, we started out at 41.7 grains, got 26.58, and this at 43.5, we maxed out at 27.58. Lower highest velocity was actually at 43.3, 
maxing out at 27.59. Now this particular graph, it might look somewhere around 43.3 grains, down at 41.9 grains, or possibly in that 42.5 grain mark. Looking at the fifth string for this set, at 41.7 grains, we started off at 2640 feet per second, and at 43.5 grains, we maxed out at 2768. The widest node that we'd see on here centers right around 42.5 grains at the 2700 feet per second. We can see the rounds at 42.3 through 42.7 have an extreme spread of an entire five feet per second. Having all this data to work with, we don't have to look at just these 10 rounds. And I'm gonna throw three different graphs up here to give you different ways of looking at it. This is off my 6.5 guys chart that's made in Excel. This plots the average along with the data points along the graph so you can see the extreme width graphically as it compares to some of the other rounds. We can see on here without just looking at our standard deviations, at 41.9 grains, pretty tight group, at 42.5 grains, relatively low extreme spread. The same at 42.9 grains, a relatively low extreme spread between those rounds. All different points that we highlighted in the various graphs that we showed. Now looking at charting only extreme spread, at 41.7 grains, we start off with an extreme spread all the way at 40 feet per second, drop down to 10, and go up and down kind of in a sinusoidal waveform. But if we can deal with a little bit more extreme spread, the wider node might be somewhere around the 43.3 grain. Because we can see that extreme spreads from 42.9 grains to 43.3 are all under 20. If you prefer to look at standard deviations and you'd like to change your threshold to somewhere around seven, that 42.9 to 43.3 grain load has that exact variation. Standard deviations below seven in all three of those grain weights. Not that there's not different velocities there, but the standard deviations seem to stay lower. Eric does give the guidance not to be looking at groups during this testing. I believe the reason for this is he wants you to modify your group size based on your cartridge overall length. He doesn't want you to feel like you have to compromise your extreme spread on your load just to get a smaller group size. Try to achieve that with cartridge overall length adjustment. I did record all this testing with my shot marker, and if you want to see all the groups, they're in the OCW versus 10 shot ladder test video. But for those that can't resist, all 50 of these rounds went into a group that measured 1.37 MOA. But now let's look at the CCI 41. The CCI 41, we only have 10 data points, starting at 41.7 grains, 2667 feet per second was what we achieved, and at 43.5 grains, we went all the way to 2814 feet per second. And you'll notice that the velocities that we achieved with the CCI 41s was higher than this Fed 205 Match AR. One thing that I do like about this powder and primer combination is that we're not seeing any huge increases or decreases in the chart. It's relatively consistent. We see a little bit of increase in velocity with our charge weight. It's not linear, but it's pretty consistent. The easiest node and the only node I would specifically identify in this chart looks to be around 42.7 grains. We can see if we, our data points at 42.5 through 42.9, we don't have a crazy extreme spread, but at 42.7 and 42.9, we had basically identical velocities within one foot per second, which is certainly within the error of the chronograph. As we increase charge weight, the velocities go up. So if we were going to pick the CCI 41, the note I would for sure be looking for around is around 42.7 grains. Again, this will be a perfect example of why we shouldn't be looking at group size. Again, 10 rounds only, but the group size for these 10 rounds went into 1.6 MOA. Does this mean that we can't tune this load with cartridge overall length? No, it just means it gave us a larger group when we did our velocity test. So if you run this test, you may want to not tempt yourself, just fire those off, get your velocities, and don't look at your group size. Now the next part of this test is to choose the primer, look at the powder charge we got from our graphs, and then do our cartridge overall length testing. I want to know what your choice is in the comment section below, what you pick and why, and if you want to catch the results of this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you can't wait to see the results, make sure you check out this playlist where we go over this entire process with 140 grain ELDM and H4350. I hope to see you come back next week, and until then, stay safe in small groups.